Welcome back to the class on human resources management. My name is Aradhana Malik. I have been helping you with this course. Uh, today, we will discuss the different types of scorecards that we use in human resources management to evaluate how the human resources that we have or the processes of human resources that we have implemented have uh, um, added value to the organization. So, let us get on uh, types of scorecards some sources, there is this book by uh, Gilmore and Williams and there is a paper in that book that I have used, there is this chapter by J. J. Phillips and there is a paper by Sriman Narayan. Okay. Uh, various types of scorecards are used, the first one that we will discuss here as uh, outlined very well by Phillips is, uh, you know this is called the basic input process output. Uh, scorecard. So, basic IPO scorecard. Now, this is a very simple way of maintaining records of whatever we do. We document, we, uh, we quantify the processes that are going into the organization, uh, you know the, 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 the measures sorry the measures that we are taking for the growth of the organization or the measures that we are taking to achieve our objectives and these measures can be the programs that we institute, the participants that we take, the volume of um, um, you know the, the resources that goes in, costs, employees etcetera. Uh, the process measures are the time it takes to recruit people, the participation rates, promotion rates etcetera. So, the processes that we go through in order to utilize the resources that we have put in at the input stage and the outcome measures, we evaluate how much, how many people still want to stay with the organization. So, retention rates could be calculated, productivity of the uh, employees could be calculated, job satisfaction could be evaluated through performance reviews, through interviews, through appraisals etcetera. So, it is a very simple plus minus kind of method of evaluating whether whatever we are doing is of use to anyone or not. This is the basic IPO scorecard, input uh, process output scorecard. The next form of scorecards is the causal chain scorecard in which we take, uh, you know we again this is this is a more detailed uh, uh, type of the IPS, IPO scorecard, we find out what is causing what. So, we evaluate everything in detail, we have some input measures which is people projects times etcetera, then the cost measures, we find out how much each input has cost us. So, we make I mean this these things can be document, the, the documented, these things can be put in black and white. So, how many people did we recruit, how much money did we spend on recruiting them, how many people participated in programs, how much did we spend on, on those uh, programs. So, you know we do this for every activity, scorecards are before I go further I must clarify that scorecards are very specific to specific activities, we evaluate each activity in terms of the parameters that we have defined and see how valuable that, that activity is for us. So, if I um, will take one example and I will discuss each scorecard with you on that. Let us take the example of training programs, let us assume that we are bringing in a new technology into your office. For example, we have enterprise resource planning here uh, in IIT and maybe you know your organization is planning to implement that technology to manage your operations. So, when we discuss IPO input process output scorecard, you will find out let us just go back a little bit, hmm, you will find out you know how many times the the uh, uh, um, uh, how many times you have to administer that program to people you will find out how many participants participate in the training program for ERP you know the number of people who participate huh, and the number of and the costs involved for each each participant the the number of employees uh, that are engaged in running the program who do not actually participate in the training etcetera. So, you will make a list of all of these things. Then you find out how many people actually uh, uh, stay through the program, how many people complete the program from start to finish hmm. and uh, then you move on to retention and productivity and output, how well has this ERP helped your business. 
So, how well has this, this information management system helped your business in terms of how many people are retained, what processes are simplified, how much time has each, uh, did each process uh, take before this was implemented and how much time is it taking now. If the difference is significant, that means that this has been a positive input. If the difference is minimal or nil or if the difference or if the difference goes in negative. For example, uh, 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 you know, uh, maybe maintaining records of the salaries of employees. Hmm telling them what their salaries were like or maybe leave maintenance. So, if initially people had to apply for leave on using a pen and paper and the, the, the leave letter took about uh, say uh, 2 or 3 days to reach the person who actually approved the leave and filed it. So, if the whole process from a person taking a piece of paper and saying I need one day of casual leave and uh, till the time this, this uh, leave note entered the person's personal file, the, the total time taken was about 3 days. And after the implementation of this process, the number of people who are approving things has increased. The, num the, the time taken is uh, 3 days or maybe 2 and a half days or maybe 5 days, then maybe it is not worthwhile to implement this process. On the other hand, if initially the time taken was 3 days and it has been cut short to 1 day or half a day and the employee can see where the application is at that point in time, at any point in time, then it is a positive addition. So, things are measured in terms of input and output. So, uh, the next one is again you know th we evaluate how many people are going through these programs, the costs that are in involved, reaction and satisfaction, reaction measures are then calculated. So, we, we find out you know whether the people who are actually involved in evaluating and keeping records are actually satisfied or sorry the people who are involved in a particular process are actually satisfied or not. They what is their reaction to something new that you have started if you put them through a program are they satisfied do they like what they are doing are they learning anything what is their reaction. Then the learning measures is the is the uh, the new program actually or the new training program actually teaching them anything. So, are there any changes in knowledge, skills and perceptions? Do people feel that applying for leave has become easy by the implementation of this new management information system or is it more difficult? Maybe earlier they would just pick up the phone and ask where their application is, but the system is so secure that they do not know where the application is. It just says not approved yet, not approved yet. So, they do not know. On the other hand, if this management information system system tells them where the bottleneck is and they can personally go and request the person concerned to ok the application or they can find out if the, the concerned person is on leave and somebody else is in charge and if they are in a, uh, some sort of emergency they can find out then maybe it is good. So, you know so changes in, in perception of the whole process leave taking is very difficult it is painful so let me not apply for leave this type of leave is very difficult this type of project is very difficult this type of training is very difficult let me not go in to it. If you are implementing a training program then the learning outcomes have they learnt anything have they been able to transfer those skills to their jobs etcetera. So, all of this will need to be evaluated and quantified as far as possible. Then comes the application or impact measures, the activity behavior. I mean you learning something is one thing, but you using it in your job on a regular routine basis so much so that it becomes a part of how things happen in your organization that is a whole different thing. So, again I am going to switch to a different example. For example, in our libraries these days we have something called as electronic databases and these databases are very expensive. So, you get the database and many people uh, start using this database and you know so, so you, you evaluate how many users are there or going back to the previous example in the case of ERP also you may find that initially when a management information system is implemented at that point of time the, the, the uh, uh, many people are not very comfortable using it, but after they have been trained to use it and they see how things are working on it, the number of people who are actually using it willingly goes up. So, the use data can be collected, hmm. activity, behavior all of these things are then assessed. There are people, there will be people who will get more and more comfortable with this technology and who will not want to use the regular pen and paper method of applying for leaves. There could still be people who are not so comfortable with it yet. So, you know 
you find out the reasons and see whether it is user friendly or not, whether any glitches are resolved or not. In our uh, institute for example, the, the system we have is so wonderful that we have a support, we have very cooperative support staff. We just pick up the phone, glitches are there, there is technology, there are glitches. We just pick up the phone and say can you please help me with it and even if we call the person who is not concerned, they will immediately give us the contact information of the person who is going to help us resolve the issue or if we can't get through to them, then they go out of their way to find out who is responsible and how this can be resolved and they call us back within a reasonable period of time. Now, if I have that kind of support, my willingness to use something difficult, something complicated will go up significantly because I know it is required and if I am not able to do something, there will be somebody who will be willing to help me do it. So, you know these things have a very uh, high impact on how things are evaluated, how things change and especially in the case of maintenance of uh, scorecards, when we have user data, how many people are logging in on a daily basis, how many people are using this new training on a daily basis, etcetera. So, that can help us evaluate whether we should invest in it further or not, then the impact uh, measures. So, ultimately what is the output? Is it cutting down on the time required to process leave applications or not? Is it cutting down on or is it opening up new avenues to add more types of leave within the same portal or not? So, you know all of that. Is the need for documentation really there? If there is need for documentation, does it allow you to upload any kind of documents to the system or not? So, all of those things considered, we see what the impact of this new thing that we have introduced is on our uh, employees and then we go further and see whether we have uh, got any return on our investments. So, we need to we end up conducting a study on the monetary benefits that the new program or new technology has brought to our organization and this whole detailed analysis will constitute a causal chain scorecard. Then we come to what is known as the HR process scorecard. Hmm. Causal chain scorecard is what impacts what? Input process output uh, scorecard is how one thing ends up in another. Causal chain is something more detailed than an IPO. IPO is also related to the cause and effect relationship. Now, we come to the HR process, human resources process scorecard. In this, we initially start with the acquisition or profile. Hmm. So, we list down whatever we, we have with us. Huh. So, whatever we have taken in as resources. Then we move on to the preparation and readiness. Hmm. So, we evaluate how much, how prepared our resources are to contribute. We make a list of the resources that we have acquired. Then we find out how prepared our resources are to uh, uh, contribute to the organization. And so, we evaluate how much experience they have, how much you know how much they know, how much what their education is like etcetera and how much they are learning. Then we move on to the maintenance or compensation, huh? we find out how much we are paying them and then we evaluate what their engagement is, what how much, uh, how motivated they are, what their productivity levels are. Then we also make a list of the retention, how many people actually stay with the organization and what their loyalty is, what their tenures are, how satisfied they are and then we conduct exit interviews for people who are leaving the organization and we evaluate everything here in terms of this. Okay. So, we evaluate the whole process of taking in resources, especially the human resources. We find out what they are coming in with how many we are taking in, hmm, what they are coming in with and then we see how much we are paying them, how much their motivation has been in terms of this, how much we are paying them in terms of this hmm, and then we see what their loyalty is in terms of this, how many people actually stay. If they are high performers and they still go, then something is wrong over here. If they they are uh, their productivity is low then this could be a reason so we find out so you know we evaluate each of these arrows here and then 
you know so retention and loyalty and job satisfaction is evaluated and when they leave we find out where the problem was was it here was it here was it here was it here so where the problem lay so this is called the human resource process scorecard we keep we quantify information at every stage then we also can evaluate uh, the common human capital measures taken by or assessed by various organizations and we can come up with the best practices scorecard for our industry and evaluate the progress of every employee against uh, uh, or uh, against this best practices scorecard. So, this helps us set our expectations from our employees. So, we can evaluate and these are some of the, the, the uh, parameters that have been given here which is uh, innovation and creativity, how innovative they are, how creative they are, if we can quantify this nothing like it, then employee attitudes, employee satisfaction, organizational commitment, employee engagement, all of this can be, you know we can lay down some standards for each of these uh, uh, measures. Hmm. Then workforce stability is another one, turnover and termination is another one, tenure and longevity. Uh, adds to or contributes to the workforce uh, stability. Then we have uh, employee capability, we have experience, learning, knowledge, competencies, etcetera. We have uh, educational level that helps us understand how capable an employee is. Then we have human capital investment. What is the human resource uh, the, uh, the human resource department? investing into the development of human capital within the organization. The total human capital investment can be calculated in terms of what the human resource department is doing, uh, you know what we are doing in terms of their benefits, how we are trying to retain them etcetera, investment by category of uh, uh, inputs that we are giving to our uh, human capital. Then leadership can be assessed by getting 360 degree feedback, leadership inventories can be kept, leadership perception, how people perceive their leaders, wh what their understanding is of what a leader should be like. Then we can assess the productivity, the productivity of the unit in which the employee is working and the gross productivity of the organization can be assessed and that can help us get an idea of and you know we need to benchmark things. When we talk about the best practices scorecard, we need to set standards and we can evaluate employees on where they are in terms of this. Then the workforce profile, job creation and acquisition, we have job growth, recruitment sourcing and effectiveness, efficiency, compensation and benefits, how much we are paying them, what benefits they are getting, variable compensation, how much is the variable compensation, hmm, employee ownership plans, stock uh, ownership plans, etc. So, how much involved the employee is within the organization in the decision making process, etc. Compliance and safety. Hmm. So, complaints and grievances, health and safety, charges and litigation, how many times employees complain, how many employees sue the organization, all those records can be maintained, what is considered ok, acceptable, what is considered bad here, you know how many people, if, if for example, in a factory that has high levels of a very, uh, 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 you know, uh, very sensitive machinery that has to be handled. Uh, by very skilled people, occasionally you may have accidents and a certain number of accidents are are considered to be, they are not acceptable, but we say ok, you know in so many processes are going on. So, these many accidents will be an acceptable norm for the rate of accidents, anything more than this is bad, anything less than this is good for us. So, how many people sue? the organization for something like that. Sometimes it may be out of your control, people are just not dealing with their machines in a very safe and cautious manner and they get hurt and the, the organization gets sued or the machines are rolled and the organization has not got the feedback for it or the organization has not had the money to invest in good quality machinery. So, how many times has this happened and where the organization stands in terms of these things. So, all of that needs to be considered here and some measures, some standards need to be laid down and your own organization's working needs to be ass assessed in terms of that. Then employee relations, hmm. how many people are absent without leave tardiness, how many people are late, 
work life balance of the employees etc so this is the best practices scorecard now let's come to the more acceptable form of scorecards which is the balanced scorecard which is used most often in an organization in in most organizations these days this was developed by kaplan and norton and it has been evaluated in various ways i'll show you a paper uh, towards the end of this presentation uh, that uh, was written by kaplan and norton uh, i have a link to it and i will show you that link towards the end of the presentation anyway so balanced scorecard is a scorecard of individual employees of individual processes of units of activity that is evaluated in terms of the i mean so so you know the, we we take the vision and strategy of the organization as the core and this vision and strategy is evaluated in terms of the financial perspective the customer perspective the people perspective and the operational perspective financial perspective is how do we satisfy our shareholders the difference between shareholders and stakeholders is that shareholders are people who actually get a piece of the pie who are part owners of the organization so their connection with the organization is in terms of money only when we talk about stakeholders we say stakeholders are people who have any stake in the organization who are connected to the organization in some way maybe money maybe satisfaction maybe location maybe anything stakeholders are people who are affected by the workings of the organization they could be neighbors physical neighbors of the organization people living in the vicinity of the factory who get affected by the effluence by the the uh, uh, pollution the factory is producing who are uh, benefited by the the factory's own hospital and own school etc so all of these people even though they are not getting money or they are not they don't have a money involvement in the organization they still are getting affected by the organization so that is the stakeholders okay so that is the financial perspective customer perspective is how our customers view us in terms of vision and strategy what is our ultimate goal that is the whole point of the balanced scorecard we evaluate these parameters in terms of what our ultimate goal is from these perspectives what do our customers say about us we may be making tons of money but if our customers are not satisfied with either what we do or with how we behave they may be buying things from us because we are the only ones producing this or for various reasons but if they are not satisfied with the way we do things then then we need to do something about it so uh people perspective how our employees contribute how our employees see us is the people perspective and the operational perspective how do we excel at what we do what do we do how do we carry out our different processes and how are these processes then connected to the ultimate how do these processes then lead to the ultimate vision and strategy of the organization how and these these things are constantly influenced by each other the vision and strategy is influenced by how we are able to do things and what we do is influenced by the vision and strategy of the organization so the ultimate goal and the plans that are made to achieve that ultimate goal similarly how much money we have currently will determine what kind of strategy we can adopt and the strategy that we adopt will ultimately influence how much money we are able to spend on various things similarly our customers will be influenced by what our vision is our our market will be decided the customers who buy whatever we are producing either product or service will be decided by our ultimate vision in similarly the vision will depend on who what kind of customer base exists out there we may be thinking of one type of customer base but if it doesn't exist we may have to adapt to the existing customer base and modify our offerings in a way that we get maximum customers from uh, who can buy whatever we are able to produce or give them and people perspective the the people who actually do the work for us in the organization influence what how we the the vision has to be adapted according to what we have in terms of people resources also so all those things are interconnected okay this is the example of a balanced scorecard for example you have a goal here achieving excellent customer satisfaction measure or metric percentage of customers lost over 12 months 
less the target here is to ensure that less than 10 percent loss of customers occurs in 6 months time and the development actions that we can take are develop lost customers report find out how many customers were lost for what reason and then we decide to take the measures to prevent further loss of customers. Similarly, you know when we are trying to achieve excellent customer satisfaction, the second measure or metric that we can adopt is the percentage of customers who completed a customer satisfaction, CS means customer satisfaction survey. So, who completed a customer satisfaction survey in the past 6 months. The target is that more than 80 percent of our customers complete a customer satisfaction survey this year. We want to ensure that this happens and what do we do with, with this? We use customer feedback to improve customer satisfaction survey. Then level of customer satisfaction and quartile for customer satisfaction compared to the sector that we operate in. So, this is an example of a balanced scorecard. Okay. Some criticisms that have come up regarding a balanced scorecard are issues related to its interpretation and implementation. People feel it is very difficult to uh, interpret and implement. There are issues related to time and level of implementation. So, uh, you know one it is uh, the in it, it has to be done on an individual two uh, level and the second thing is that it is a reporting tool. It is used as a reporting tool. People also feel that because it is so complicated, the people who are filling up the scorecard are being distracted from their business activities. They feel that there is lack of ownership and accountability. People have to write something in the scorecard, so they just write it and get on with it. But the, the level of responsibility or accountability seems to be missing and this is you know based on years of experience and study. And it is in many cases it becomes very difficult to establish a cause and a direct cause and effect measurable cause and effect relationship. Now, let me show you how to, uh, um, how to use the scorecard. When you use the scorecard, it is very important to select the measures and ensure that all stakeholders agree. Set the target from minimum acceptable levels to ideal levels of performance. Monitor the data that is coming in. Conduct a gap analysis regarding the gap in a specific measure. Identify or select the action or solution implement the action or solution, forecast the value that you will use to evaluate different parameters, monitor the progress and then show the value by calculating the impact of the solution to close the gap. So, this is how you can use the uh, any type of scorecard by maintaining clear cut records at every stage and trying to establish a uh, cause and effect relationship. Some links are there is a uh, you know the the there is this paper by Kaplan and Norton and uh, let me show you this uh, the so I will just quickly show this to you and this is what I have for you over here. Yeah I have this paper up here ok. So, uh, this is the paper this is one paper that beautifully outlines how the balance scorecard can be used as a st uh, strategic management system tool. Uh, but and this paper was written by uh, Kaplan and Norton, the people who actually designed and developed the balanced scorecard. The paper has been published in Harvard Business Review in July and August 2007. So, if you can lay your hands on this paper, it will be uh, very helpful for you in understanding what the balanced scorecard is and how it can be used in your organization. The other uh, thing that I can show you here is the the website. This is the website of the balanced scorecard institute and uh, you can go through this website and it gives you all kinds of information about the balanced scorecard. Hmm. So, uh, see there is there are white papers all kinds of information regarding what the balanced scorecard is and how it can be used in your organization. It has been studied by various people and see here is an example of how strategy can be mapped using the balanced scorecard. So, this is a, a free website you can go to it and you can read up more about it if you are interested in knowing what this is. And uh, that is all I have for you for this lecture. We will continue with some more HR 
discussion in the next class. So, thank you very much for listening.